Hello and welcome to my craft table. I'm Kim Ferguson and this is my Finish It Up Friday. And what is Finish It Up Friday? It is basically me coming on here in celebration of what I have accomplished at my craft table. I have been a close to my heart consultant slash maker and now actually an advocate, which is quite exciting. It's a little bit of a promotion for me. Um, for this month. So thank you to those of you that have subscribed to all of my social media and most importantly, thank you to those people that support me in my close to my heart business. There is a link in the description below if you would like to browse my close to my heart maker website and to see the lovely products. Some of the things I'm going to be showing today are new products, retired products, and some that are from, you know, long ago. But what the purpose of this video is and the finish up project that I'm working on is to get through those kits that are in my craft room. I have cherished my supplies for too long and it's time to get them into projects that are finished and then ultimately to get my photos onto my scrapbook pages. The other thing I've been working on are holiday themed projects. Uh, getting some cards made ahead from the kits that I have because I'm trying to be much better about sending out cards to those that mean a lot to me in my life. So with that said, let's get into the projects that I have finished in the last maybe three weeks since my last kind of run through of projects. So I volunteer at a teen center. And so in October, we made candy bar wrappers. So this is Frankenstein's monster. And this is a Cricut cut that you can purchase through Cricut. There is an affiliate link to Cricut in my description below. What happens with that is I just get a small commission. It doesn't cost you any more to purchase the cartridges. It just shows me a little bit of gratitude in sharing something Cricut with you. There are a bunch of close to my heart consultant or cartridges as well, but this was just a regular image set. I think it's like holiday candy bar wrappers is what it's called. So this is Frankenstein. There's a lovely vampire. And so again, this could be for like a thicker chocolate bar. Okay, or if you don't like chocolate, another kind of bar, but this was a vampire. And so I had to finish up these kits because the kids didn't make them all. So there's five different ones here and each of them I finished about five or six yesterday. So I probably have 25 to 30 candy bar wrappers ready for next year. Probably going to use those for my grandson's, uh, he'll be second grade then. So maybe that's what we'll do is we'll get some Costco candy bars, put them in these wrappers and send them on their way all ready to go. I had to laugh while I was working on these that the future Kim will be so much more appreciative of the past Kim in that I didn't just put these away unmade. They're ready to go. Just have to grab the baggies, purchase the candy bars, slip them in and send them to my daughter-in-law to send off to the classroom. So that was a huge success. I must say I kind of grumbled as the time went on because it probably took me two and a half, three hours to finish those up. But that again, 25 to 30, that will make it for a public school classroom. They're pretty big. So I feel good to accomplish that. So other kits that I've worked on through the weeks, uh, some wander cards. I just love the thin cuts that were with this. Now, let me just say that at the time of recording this, there potentially could be some of these products still available. There is a standard in that stamp sets that come out in the core catalog or the two month long catalogs. The stamps will be available for one year unless they were like a constant campaign or a special. The thin cuts are the things that run out. So when a new catalog comes out and you see a stamp and thin cut set that you really like, you really need to grab it because once the thin cuts have been purchased, they won't have those any longer. Close to my heart makes their stamps in-house. So that's how we can have the stamp sets available for a year. But the metal thin cuts come from a different manufacturer and they are only for a limited time while supplies last. So I wanted to make sure to make that clear on here that just because a Wander stamp set has retired from a catalog, doesn't mean you can't find them in the online only link in my maker website. Okay, so there's just a, a tip for you. I've even kind of been learning that as I've been getting more 
active with close to my heart lately another thin cut making the skyline so again a bunch of cards ready to go i really like this one with kind of the sunset or the the morning sunrise i really like that okay and then the final one of these wander cards here we go so for your outdoorsy friends i thought this was kind of fun you can go in and kind of rate <laughs> what your thoughts are that's what those little dots remind me of is, is on a scale of one to ten what do you rank <laughs> so i wouldn't do that to anyone <laughs> i just thought that was funny all right and now we're getting to the lovely pumpkin spice yes that was for the last two months but kudos to me for working on a more current kit and getting it accomplished so again be sure to go onto that maker website type in pumpkin spice and see what products may still be available so i'm just i'm not going to go into real detail this was the workshop kit i basically follow those there might be some little tweaks that i do here and there no i don't put my photos on here no i don't always put the placeholders on here but it's a given that where the mats are, that is where your photos or possibly your journaling will go. I didn't do any ink distressing. Usually I like to go around with the dark ink, but I didn't do that on everything here. It was really just turning off all my social media, being in a weekly Zoom group meeting where other crafters were working and being focused and getting things done so if you don't take anything away from this video take away that you need to shut off those screens and sit down pick a day of the week where you can dedicate the time solely to getting things done finish it up for friday so here we go so again i'm not going to go into all the specific details of these i just want to show you and hope that you're celebrating with me in my accomplishment of course where it looks kind of weird that's where your photos would naturally go i think when it comes time to put my pictures on there i'm going to find this piece of scrap paper i'm going to stick it under there i'm going to trace that and get the pattern and then transfer it to my photo or maybe put a block in there for journaling so that's how i'm going to handle those two misshapen things they're not your traditional rectangular or square so that's my plan for that since I didn't do it before I glued it down okay next one real simple basic colors this is one where it's like you know what I probably would have sponged every little element on here on a normal workshop time that I would be spending but again my mission my focus was let's get this done so I simply put them down um, a real stressor for me but a challenge I'm willing to take on is I do struggle with the floral embellishments so when I come to a page and those are on there I have a tough time um, I think that goes back I can't arrange flowers in a vase I just plop them in there and you know the way they come is the way they go in so it's just not in my skill set, but it's a challenge I'm I'm working on and uh, I'm going to keep pushing on because, you know, I think they look OK. I do copy what the workshop instructions show and that's what they're for. They're to help us. If we don't know how to do something like the creators, the designers, then they've given you the exact instructions. Just get the picture and do your best to build it up. It's paper crafting. It's not rocket science, as I like to say. These were our COVID themed papers from last year. I hadn't finished them. This was a workshop that I did with Facebook Live. I hadn't put my embellishments on there. I wanted to make mine really specific on each page. So this page I want to focus on that we had the toilet paper shortage. We needed to buy up all the hand sanitizer or we thought, right? That seemed to be what happened. The grocery store shelves were empty and there's fear of that happening again. So this is my toilet paper and hand sanitizing page. <laughs> This one here is going to be about the things that I did during the pandemic. I really became a good neighbor in that I walked with neighbors. We took kids on uh, hide and seek at night. We went fishing for frogs in the local little stream. So this is going to be focused on how did I overcome this? How were we all together in the neighborhood making that time work? So I've got some great pictures of all those things that we did. This one here, stay home. Obviously, you know, things that we did inside the house. My husband and I are both working from home. We've actually been home. In March, it'll be two years. We've both been home full time. Never in our 33 years of marriage have we been together so much. So it was a good test. Can we survive in the household together? 
I feel like we have our separate apartments. I live upstairs with my craft room and everything. And he lives downstairs with his work computer and all the meetings that he has to go through. So I would like to document that on here. And again, I just added the embellishments. I had put the papers as close to my heart had shown. This again looks kind of weird because again, it's got the cutout. So pictures would go there. The reason why mine looks like this is I gut my papers. I don't like to waste the paper that's going to be behind there. So I'll put my pictures in and then I can put a piece of scrap paper on there that maybe has some stamping errors or something on it. But for right now, it does look kind of funny. This is some of our, I love these acrylic pieces that today is all one big acrylic piece. I had that, I had a lot of fun doing that. <clears throat> Pardon me. And the punch outs come with the exact shape to go behind there. I didn't have to cut them out individually and put them behind. It's all one sheet that says today. You just simply adhere it to the back. This was another floral layout. Again, not my, you know, my taste where I go to, but I love purple and greens together. That's exactly what my master bedroom is decorated in. So I had to get this pack. And now that I've made this, I love it. I have a daughter-in-law, you know, so maybe her and I, maybe my mom and I, it'd be a great uh, page to celebrate the women that are in my life. And then this one is from the same workshop. I love all the butterflies. I put foam adhesive behind them. So it looks like their wings are flapping. So this was, this was fun. So it, it was fun to stretch myself in doing more feminine type pages. You know, two sons, a husband, all kinds of nephews, two grandsons. You know, there's, there's not much room for the florals and the prettiness. So, which, you know, fits my style. I'm, I, I was a tomboy growing up, so I'm okay with that. But yeah, I really do love this color combination. And then this is um, most recent Holly and Ivy. I really like this, has a real deer theme to it. I have a personal connection with deer that I like to have deers in my scrapbooking, whether it's Christmas or not. So this turned out really well. Again, it's doing those floral embellishments. I think they came together okay. Journaling spots. I did put the photo placeholders. So some Christmas ready to go already. Here's another. There's three layouts for the, the holly and ivy. And so again, I just, I really love this. This seems like a real good masculine type of Christmas layout for a heavy masculine family. Plus it's got our deer on there. So I had to get the, the kit just because of the deer. <laughs> and then this final one here, I did mix, mix this up and did my own thing with this one. Um, I don't remember how the original one looked. I have to confess that once I get a workshop kit completed, I do recycle the instructions. I had been saving all of my workshop kit instructions in my craft room. It was building up and building up and building up. And I just realized I don't have the space, nor the desire to want to take up the space with those instructions. I have the Make It From Your Heart books, and those are full of all kinds of sketches and ideas to do. Plus I have all of our old, you know, how-to books. There's uh, wishes and so forth. Those are no longer available, but I have those to go back to if I need ideas for sketches. And there's always the internet. We all are really good about searching and finding sketches on there. And I, I ask you to look for personal challenges. So join some Facebook groups where they do challenges. On the 20th of every month, I try to participate in Craft IQ. That's where they give you seven days of prompts and you build a layout based on that. And another one I'm a part of is Scrapbook Addicts. They do some type of scrapbook layout challenge every month. And if you post it by the end of the month, you get maybe chosen to give a prompt for the next month. So just some ideas as those have really prompted me to be more consistent with my videos and my crafting in my room to get things done. So I hope that I've inspired you. I hope I encourage you to take away some time from the screens and work on the things that you have been planning, the things you've been wanting, the joy that you get from buying the products. And the best part of it is the end result and not only joy, but just the excitement and the feeling of accomplishment. So with that, I hope that my Finish Up Friday has brought you to that point where you're inspired to go get your kits out. 
I hope you have a great scrappy weekend and I'll see you next time. Please like, subscribe, and share. Happy crafting!